Well, good morning. I hope you're doing well. Hope things are good and that uh, this week is headed in the right direction. I know it's the beginning of the week, but it's good to be headed in the right direction as we start, isn't it? So, well, we have transitioned in our Bible study on Sunday morning out of John chapter 4 and in to John chapter 5. I began moving there yesterday. Jesus is back in Jerusalem. He is ministering, and as he goes in, he goes to uh, this pool. It's an interesting story. This pool is a place where the cripple would, would lay and be, and then when the angel of the Lord, it says, comes across it, they would try to get into the pool to get healed. And so it's an interesting concept, interesting what's, what's going on. And Jesus sees this guy, and he's not having any luck. He can't get down there. And long story short, Jesus encounters him, and Jesus heals him. All's good. Everything's great. Everything's awesome. Until he tells the religious people. And they get the nose out of joint. Because Jesus dared to do it on the Sabbath. Well, what's that about? Sabbath, Saturday, that is, is the day that it is. But it's that day of, of rest. That day that where God's to be worshipped and we're to rest, which is, is awesome. But the Jews have taken it to the nth degree of, well, you couldn't do anything, even anything good. You couldn't help people. You couldn't minister to people. You know, and, uh, and they took it so far that now they're criticizing Christ. In fact, they don't even initially know it's Christ. They're like, well, who did this? And God's like, I don't know. He just, some guy did it. And then finally he encounters Jesus, and Jesus, you know, talks to him and he and he goes and tells them what Christ did and so now they're coming back and they're kind of in, antagonizing Christ if you will getting after him and uh and trying to to find out what's going on and why would he dare do this but in essence what they're doing is they're putting up barriers to God being able to work see they're saying you can't do that on the Sabbath you shouldn't be here and and so they they push back on Christ and the result is when we push back like they were pushing back, God cannot work when we we stifle him because of our rules. And that's what they were doing. Now, the Sabbath came from God, so you can't say it's a man rule. But they had taken it and twisted it. They had taken it and made it in such a way that it couldn't be used for good. Now, Jesus, throughout the gospel, spoke in against this. In fact, he talks about how the Sabbath was, was made for man, not, you know, man for the Sabbath, meaning the Sabbath was not to control us. We were to, to use it to honor God, to glorify God, to, to rest and to worship, but not to be beat down. And so he really pushed back on what they were doing. So here's the question that I want us to kind of get at is as we look at this story of the pool, when we look at the story of the man being healed, and then we see the religious leaders come in and push back you know how dare you heal somebody how dare you change someone's life he's been this way for 38 years i think the scripture says and how dare you pick the sabbath to heal him well part of me says wait sabbath's made for worship is there any better way to worship god than see him heal a man Legalism destroys. And if we're not careful, we can have a penchant for legalism. Meaning we, we get so, it's got to be this way, it's got to be that way, that we eliminate the ability for God to work. We eliminate him being able to move. Where is that a problem in your life? And I know we're, we're, we're all created different and we're, we all are different. Some of us, maybe air toward legalism it's our makeup it's our background some of us probably don't have much of an issue with that but probably all of us tend to build some rules that may keep god from working sometimes that prevent him from doing what he wants to do and so i want to challenge you today do you constrain the miraculous do you prevent god by a perspective an attitude a viewpoint, a misplaced theology that prevents God from working and moving. I want you to think about this. God made the rules so he can change them. 
And Jesus changed them because he is God. I want you to hear that. God made the rules. God established the Sabbath. Okay, he, he did that. And since God did it, God makes the rules, God can change the rules. And Jesus comes in and he changes the rules. Why? Because he's God. And so may that encourage you today. And will you allow God to change what he can so he can work in your life? Maybe there's some change that needs to happen in your heart. Maybe it needs to happen in your mind. But instead of trying to constrain the work of God, and maybe trying is a little bit of a hard word. Maybe you're not trying to constrain it. Maybe you just don't realize that you are. Instead of constrain, constraining the work of God, but you ask him to show you where you're in the way, where your perspectives and your thoughts are misplaced in preventing him from working, and then allowing you to pull that back so he can work and be who he wants you to be. God did a great work that day beside that pool. But some people couldn't see it because it didn't fit their narrative. Let's be about fitting God's narrative, not making him fit ours. Let's pray. Father, this can be so hard for us sometimes. We can be so sure of what should be, of what is right and what is wrong and what should happen and what shouldn't happen, of what can be done and what cannot be done. That we get in the way of you, of you. We just flat out get in your way. That's not good. So, Father, I pray that, that we would examine our heart, we would examine our perspectives. And, Father, if we have perspectives and attitudes that get in the way of you being you, may, may you convict us of that. May you guide us out of that. And may we honor you instead of deter from you. So we thank you that you're going to work in this way. We thank you that because we work, you work in this way, that, Father, we're going to see you do some things. And we're going to see you change us and the people we care about and people we love. Now be with us and minister to us in Christ's name. Amen. All righty. Well, hey, one thing to remember. A couple weeks out, the 17th, Saturday night, 6 o'clock, daddy-daughter dance. Love for you to be a part of that. Uh, if you have a, a daughter of any age, we're saying, bring her. If you don't, come hang out and help us out. Uh, see me, and, uh, and I'll connect you with the right people. But come help us get things set up and just have a good time. And, and that's all it's about is having a good time and encouraging and uh, being together as a family. So uh, I hope you can make it. Have a good week. Let me know if you need me. Talk to you soon.